Hello and welcome to another Lamp Bible Study. My name is James, your Bible reader and host for Lamp Bible Study. Super excited to bring you today a new book in the Bible. We'll be starting with the book of Hosea. And I'm currently reading from an NIV Collegian Bible. I hope and pray everything is going well with you. And if not, welcome to another Lamp Bible Study. We made it. (laughs) Time to uh, have... Just seek the Lord's wisdom together, have a discussion um, where we can each other speak and and simply feel what the Holy Spirit has to say to each of us. So welcome if this is your first time, not welcome back, uh, of course. And uh, let's see here. Today has been, it's been an okay day. Um, another hot day (laughs) and that's okay so uh, but we do have a lot to go over in the book of Hosea Hosea is going to be it's another prophet that is I believe living in the time of the right before the exile again it's another prophet that's going to be utilized to show how it how the relationship is depicted it, uh, from the Lord and his people. It's also, it, it's, it's going to be a lot. Um, there's quite a bit of things right off the bat with the book of Hosea. Um, so we'll discuss more into it when we get, when we start reading. Uh, I'm currently again reading from an NIV Collegiate Bible. So let's get started with the book of Hosea chapter one. <clears throat> the word of the Lord came to Hosea, son of Be- uh, Beeri, during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and during the reign of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash, king of Israel. Hosea's wife and children. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go, take yourself an adulterous wife and children of unfaithfulness, because the land is guilty of the vilest adultery in departing from the Lord. So he married Gomer, daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call him Jezreel. Because I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre at Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. In that day, I will break Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel. Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call her Lo-Ruhmah, for I will no longer show to uh, show love to the house of Israel, that I should at all forgive them. Yet I will show love to the house of Judah, and I will save them, not by bow, sword, or battle, or by horses and horsemen, but by the Lord their God. After she had weaned Lo Ruhamah, Gomer had another son. Then the Lord said, Call him Lo Ami. For you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the Israelites will be like the sand of the seashore, which cannot be measured or counted. In the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. The people of Judah and the people of Israel will be reunited, and they will appoint one leader and will come out Come up out of the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. So there is quite a bit here, just in this first portion. Um, Listen to what Hosea... So Hosea lived during um, pre... I want to say even pre-Jeremiah, because he was um, alive before even... um, So Israel had been split up into two different kingdoms by this time. Um, after Solomon, and um, the reason why is because of go back to um, Second Kings, I believe, um, and that's where the um, it's after King Solomon and his sons, where the um, kingdom is split into two. It's split um, into Israel and Judah, 
And so this, he lived right around the time before Israel um, was exiled to Assyria and Judah was going to be all that was left in, t- in the promised land. And so listen to what Hosea is told. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go, take yourself an adulterous wife and children of unfaithfulness, because the land is guilty of the vilest adultery in departing from the Lord. So he married Gomer, daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. So the Lord was telling him to go and marry a woman that would not be faithful is already known to not be faithful (laughs) to, to, or not. It's basically a prostitute. And so, and to have children, um, which he does. And so, uh, what that is showing is how the Lord feels at that time, how about Israel as a whole, Israel, um, he um, understands that, uh, so Hosea understands that this is being uh, utilized through his life as a message to the people that this is ha- just how he, uh, understanding the Lord is. The Lord is always watching. The Lord is the past, present, and the future. He's, he sees all. And, and during this time, Israel, remember, Jeroboam, um, was uh, not of the line of David. He came and he started ruling um, uh, as a, a leader in Israel um, and departed completely from the worship of the Lord. He was no longer uh, worshiping the Lord. He was worshiping other gods. He even created an image of God. Um, and so uh, the people of Israel were sacrificing to it and they were starting to mix other practices and m- other religions from around, from other nations, to the point where Israel was no longer really relying on the Lord at all. They were relying on their own thoughts and beliefs, their own feelings, how their own contracts with other nations that are around were around them. And none of the nations around them remember um, Israel was supposed to be the beacon of hope. They were supposed to be the, sh- the showing what it was to follow the Lord. And then they were to be blessed. And then the blessings would outpour onto all the, all the other nations and everybody would understand what it was to worship the Lord. However, the people of Israel decided they didn't want to fully worship the Lord. They, it was too hard or it was too much for them or it was, or there was always an excuse to whatever it is. And, they didn't have the faith. They didn't believe. They didn't have the faith. They thought they didn't. They were starting to get further and further from generations from where the Lord was act, had physical uh, actions that they could see, like the parting of the Red Sea, uh, the plagues and such. So they were getting further and further away from things, even though um, they weren't. Because their blessing, the promised land and the milk and honey and everything that they were experiencing was the continuous grace, the, the peace from the Lord. Um, however, they were taking that peace for granted, um, which is huge uh, uh, peace to even think about it, uh, bringing past to present. Um, and so the people of Israel were taking the Lord's love for granted. They were taking his gifts for granted. They were taking his blessings for granted. Not only that, but they were deeming it upon themselves. And when things would go like their own doing, and when things would go bad because of how detestable they were, were towards each other, how they, uh, they did not um, protect the widow, how they did not um, honor thy father, mother, you know, you go down the, the, the 10 commandments, they were doing the exact opposite and, and seeing that things were not going their way, then blaming the Lord who is holy because they were sinning, they were doing wrong. And the Lord was there and he was continually forgiving. That's why they weren't immediately, exiled. They weren't immediate. Okay. You broke all the laws. You broke the covenant immediately exiled, right? No, he gave them time over and over again. And this was the example. This was the example to the people. Hosea's life and what he was going through and what he was told to do was an example to the people. Mary prostitute. The Lord saying he basically married Israel, the you know, as the, his chosen people and they are not faithful. It says a lot, right? 
faith, right? When it comes down to it's all about faith. And they were not faithful. They were not faithful. Bringing past to present, do we take the Lord's blessings for granted? Do Is there things in our life that have blessed us? Ha, and we haven't yet returned that to the world, to other situations, um, to allow for that blessing to continue because we kept it inside. We kept it uh, selfishly to ourselves. One thing, one thing that I can tell you, being a follower of the Lord, being a follower of the way of Christ and not um, reaching out to people, not uh, not. Uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to say, hey, this is an opportunity to be a witness, or hey, this is an opportunity to be a self-example, to show what love is, that it can also be uh, uh, preventative of others and their being able to continue on their journey to understand what it is to feel the Lord's love. So really take a look at our lives and see are we taking advantage? Um, you can see around how the Lord loves his people. The Lord loves his creation, us humans, right? Even those that don't believe in him, he still loves them. And we can see that the people who may not have a relationship with the Lord obviously take for granted their, the blessings that we have on a day-to-day. They don't know where these things come from, they may believe that they have an idea that it may have came from themselves or things that they have done or worked for. They don't understand that all good things, all good things come from the Lord. It's not just luck. It's not just things that you do to research and find out. Being able to even just do that is brought to you by the Lord. (laughs) (laughs) And no, that's will not be trademarked. (laughs) But think about it. Think about it in all different aspects of our lives. So are we truly understanding the gifts from the Lord and the fruit of the Spirit as well? We'll get to the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts from the Lord more so when we get to the New Testament. But take a look at our lives. Take a look at the blessings and see, are we um, thankful And are we faithful to the Lord uh, for his milk and honey, for those blessings that continually rain down? Before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Okay, let's continue to read um, Hosea chapter 2. Say of your brothers, my people, and of your sisters, my loved one. Israel punished and restored. Rebuke your mother, rebuke her, for she is not my wife, and I am not her husband. Let her remove the adulterous look from her face and the unfaithfulness from between her breasts. Otherwise, I will strip her naked and make her as bare as on the day she was born. I will make her like a desert turn her into a parched land and slay her with thirst. I will not show my love to her children because they are the children of adultery. Their mother has been unfaithful and has conceived them in disgrace. She said, I will go after my lovers who give me food or who who give me my food and my water, my wool and my linen, my oil and my drink. Therefore, I will block her path with thorn bushes. I will, I will wall her and sow that she cannot find her way. She will chase after her lovers, but not catch them. She will look for them, but not find them. Then she will say, I will go back to my husband as at first, for then I was better off than now. She has not acknowledged that I was the one who gave her the grain, the new wine and oil, who lavished on her the silver and gold, which they used for Baal. Therefore, I will take away my grain when it ripens and my new wine when it is ready. I will take back my wool and my linen intended to cover her nakedness. So now I will expose her lewdness before the eyes of her lovers. No one will take her out of my hands. I will stop all her celebrations. 
her yearly festivals, her new moons, her Sabbath days, all her appointed feasts. I will ruin her vines and her fig trees, which she said were her were her pay from her lovers. I will make them a thicket, thicket, and wild animals will devour them. I will punish her for the days she burned incense to the bells. She decked herself with rings and jewelry and went after her lovers. But me she forgot, declares the Lord. Therefore, I am now going to allure her. I will lead her into the desert and speak tenderly to her. There I will give her back her vineyards and will make the valley of Achor a door of hope. There she will sing as in the days of her youth, as in the day she came up out of Egypt. In that day, declares the Lord, you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me my master. I will remove the names of the Baals from her lips. No longer will their names be invoked. In that day, I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and the birds of the air and the creatures that move along the ground. Bow and sword and battle I will abolish from the land so that all may lie down in safety. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness and you will acknowledge the Lord. In that day, I will respond, declares the Lord. I will respond to the skies, and they will respond to the earth, and the earth will respond to the grain, the new wine and oil, and they will respond to Jezreel. I will plant her for, my, for myself in the land. I will show my love to the one I called, not my loved one. I will say to those called, not my people, you are my people, and they will say, you are my God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So in Hosea chapter two, there's a lot here. In fact, there's a prophecy on a prophecy on a prophecy. <laughs> of course there is, right? Multiple meanings. So let's start with this first portion here, because there was a lot going through my mind when I read over this. Oh my gosh, there's a lot. Okay. Um, uh, she said, okay, so. So their mother has been unfaithful and has conceived them in disgrace. She said, I will go after my lovers who give me my food and my water, my wool and my linen, my oil and my drinks. Okay, so there's several things here. There's a multiple different points here. Um, first one is um, the grind. <sighs> okay, so we get into a, po a portion in our, in our life where we get career focused or focused on certain goals that we want in our life. And it could start at a very young age where, uh, <laughs> I mean, and it's almost trained to us like, okay, you want to reach this and then you want to go to this next point. And then after that, you want to go here, whether it's education or whether it's um, living standards or economy or something, or even um, having a family. These things are looked at as uh, things to focus on when the focus should be on the Lord, period, at all times. And those things will be given unto you. The Lord says that over and, over and over and over again. When we focus on him, those other things in our life that we think that we were supposed to have or we try to work for, the Lord will give those to us, will hand those to us, will put those in place so that they become what we are to have. Because it's under the Lord's time, it's under the Lord's will, it's under what the Lord wants best for us us instead of us demanding us wanting and begging and trying to make do ourselves so um take note of that take note of that in our lives also it's it says a lot here it really does it says things about relationships too um relationships when it in regards to in a relationship whether it be whoever it is in that relationship, is the purpose of the relationship for the betterment of the one person? Who's looking at it as a betterment for both, as in when the Lord says the two become one flesh, 
the two become one to better each other, to become whole. Remember, the Lord has said that he has married, he basically has married his people, right? So he can become one with us, that he can uh, live through eternity with us um, by our faith, faith in him, faith in his son, that he is, he sent his son to die on the cross. And we'll learn more about that in the new Testament, of course, but also in a relationship, in a relationship, is it one person seeking to better their life or to feel comfort in life, which I've seen time and time again, where there is some type of, making do or compromise where it's not a uh, compromise as in um, where both parties agree. It's more of what someone will allow because of what they want, uh, because of their selfishness or conceitedness or what they want about for their life, how they want their life to be. Whatever that may be, it could be a standard of living, it could be an acknowledgement, it could be economical, it could be physical, as in a, a family with so, so many people in it, etc. There's so many different aspects of this, but where does the focus lie? Is it focused on and is the focus intended for ourselves or is it focused on the Lord in what he wants for not only you, but for everyone where there is love from where we have the love from the Lord. We love ourselves and we love and we return that and we love each other. And when we're not loving each other because we're too busy into ourselves, that is going to show that is going to reflect that is going to show that there's, some unfaithfulness there because when we truly love that's faith we're being faithful because we truly love we truly want what's best for each other whereas when there's something that it's it's not really love it's just something that's said on our comfort then that's not necessarily truly love when th things go wrong and you see them time and time again particularly when it comes to divorce or or separation it's due to economy it's due to somebody not getting what they want whether it be a family or status it's due to something that has nothing to do with what the lord says is love and we'll learn more about love and the fruit of the spirit when we get to the new testament but take a look at our lives take a look at what's around um take a look at what the lord is telling us in his in the book of hosea before we go on to the next point what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this how does it make you feel and what does it make you think <clears throat> We can go on and on in the book of Hosea. There is a lot here. Okay, so another thing is he goes on to say, um, uh, okay, so the, about forgiving, basically about forgiving. Okay, so he's he's going to, therefore, I'm now going to lure her, I will lead her into the desert and speak tenderly to her. Um, this is uh, several different things. Take note of this. Part of this Okay, so desert wilderness, like exile, and then he's going to bring them back. Also, uh, <clears throat> something that will happen in, um, as a prophecy later on, but it's not necessarily specific on... It has something to do with something we'll read later on. Okay, so, and then he also says, he goes, continues, In that day, declares the Lord, you will call me uh, my husband. You will no longer call me my master. And he continues, <clears throat> um, in that day, I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and the birds of the air and the creatures that move along the ground, bow and sword and battle. I will abolish from the land so that all may lie down in safety. So, yes, he, this is literally a um, prophecy about the future. He's talking about after tribulations. He's talking about. It could be during the thousand year reign, which we'll learn about, or the new heaven, the new earth, all of that. He's talking about this. So this is a prophecy on a prophecy on a prophecy again. <laughs> so he's talking about a lot here. And he's also talking about forgiveness. He's talking about understanding that Israel was going to fall short. However, the Lord was going to do what it needs to what needed to be done because he already he was already set on doing it and he did it for their sins to be forgiven for our sins to be forgiven 
to understand that it is in faith of his accomplishments and understanding just the magnitude of that, um, that the Lord is going to make the way. And he does. He, he, and it's an eternal and everlasting um, covenant. Amen and hallelujah. And that's when he says, I will say to those called not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. And he's, everything will be new. Um, and the earth will respond to the grain, the new wine and oil, and they will respond to Jezreel. They, everything will be um, uh, as the Lord intended. And so we can take a look at what happens when we are able to forgive. So point one is to forgive, right? Point one is to forgive when we are wronged. When we are wronged, we are to forgive. We are to understand and forgive. When someone comes and asks for forgiveness in in all humbleness, because we ourselves, we have to be forgiven too. There are mistakes that we make. And we have to ask for forgiveness to one another, as well as the Lord. We have to humbly seek the Lord's forgiveness for our sins, and our, uh, which is the wrongdoings, anything that is going against the, the, uh, what the Lord has laid out in the Bible. Um, and so um, there's so much to this when it comes to our lives and understanding when other people also seek forgiveness to allow that to allow forgiveness and 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 also give that to the lord seek the lord's guidance and his wisdom and show his love um because uh, that is also allowing for that person to feel that kind of okay i did what i needed to do uh, and and I can release this. I can release this uh, and understand that I have given it. I have given this away. I have I have uh, released it to the Lord. I have seeked forgiveness and I have corrected my wrongs. And um, we are to allow for that because the Lord does that for us too, day in and day out. And He is there to acknowledge that, and we are to as well. We're to acknowledge. Um, and forgive. We are to acknowledge the forgive and acknowledge and that we have forgiven too. And what does happen? What are the things that do happen? Um, we're able to continue. We're able to look back. We're able to learn. We're able to grow. We're able to make better decisions ourselves. <laughs> As of late, recently. <laughs> Helped me to learn real quickly um, to make better decisions, um, to understand and um, understand and see a different perspective, see a different point of view as well. Um, and um, it helps. It absolutely helps when um, people come and ask you a question. You can always utilize a previous experience and knowledge. Um, you can always um, provide the wisdom from the Lord, uh, amen and hallelujah. Seek his wisdom, seek the, uh, and pray about it. Give it to the Lord. Uh, before we go on though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Okay. Let's continue to read Hosea chapter three, <clears throat> Hosea's reconciliation with his wife. <laughs> yep. Okay. The Lord said to me, go show your love to your wife uh, again, though she is loved by another and is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites. Though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes, so I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and and about a homer and a uh, lethic, or, yeah, a lethic of barley. Then I told her, you are to live with me many days, um, you must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man, and I will live with you. For the Israelites will live many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without ephod or idol. Afterward, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. Oof. Okay. <laughs> there's a lot here okay, this is okay this is prophecy of prophecy there's a lot here and 
not i mean that's why we're going to come back to Isaiah because there's so much here like this is sermon upon sermon just a few verses are okay so first one <clears throat> the lord said to me go show your love or show your love to your wife again though she is loved by another and is an adulteress okay so she, <laughs> while they were married she didn't win again <laughs> So, um, and the Lord's telling her, forgive her, love her again. Do what you got to do. So he had to do what he had to pay the person off that she was currently residing with. Because, yeah, they were married, but she was used to doing what she was used to doing. It was a habit. It was something that, it was there's many different things, right? This is one of the flesh. Okay, so we can bring that up. Um, and this was something that was a sinful act. Absolutely, she's married, but she's having relations with other men. Here is the Lord's people, and they're having a relationship with these things that they've created or other nations around them created, which are these idols and other things that weren't anything. So bringing past, a, I mean, <laughs> so it was to forgive. Bringing past to present. <laughs> There's many different ways we could take this, okay? Just this first portion. Um, Okay, for, okay, so first starting up faith or faith, walk, walk in faith with the Lord. We're gonna, we, we, it's not guaranteed that we're not going to stumble. It's, it's not. Um, things can trigger us to be weak. And the devil, the devil knows it. <laughs> he, I mean, you may be strong and you may be very strong in your relationship with your significant other. Very strong, have a good connection, but somebody cuts you off in traffic and you need to bend somewhere, but they cut you off and they almost, you almost got in a collision. Are you wishing blessings on that person? <laughs> Are you forgiving right then and there? Um, someone intentionally hit you. Did you say thank you and immediately forgive them? There's a lot to it. What I'm saying is we may be strong in, in areas. Absolutely. Amen and hallelujah to that and grow in our strength. But we also may be weak. And that is the time where we are to accept that Seek the Lord, because that's the time that the Lord shows his strength, which is above all else, which is above and beyond what we could ever imagine. He already has done so through his redeeming grace through his son. He's already, he's already done. And so, what, but just to let you know, even though we may be saved, the Lord will still be, may still be forgiving us for our sins. But he will do so, and he have, has done it, and wiped it clean for all eternity. Even the ones that, even though this is to, you're listening to this today, and you may, in five minutes from now, an hour from now, a day from now, a month from now, you may do something wrong again. Continue to find strength in the Lord. Ask for forgiveness, and know that you have been forgiven. Is it excuse? No. The sin is not, it is not an excuse to sin. And we'll get that, Paul will give us, Saul, who becomes Paul, will give us that testimony in the New Testament when we get to it. Okay, so before we go on to part, uh, the next point, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Okay, the next point is, 
For the Israelites will live many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without ephod or idol. Afterward, the Israelites will will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. So he is, this is another prophecy on a prophecy. So this is mentioning about the exile. This is mentioning about return. This is mentioning about his blessings uh, to the Lord. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. This is talking about potentially even hinting towards tribulations. Um, this is a lot here. Um, so bringing past to present, how many times have we seen what catastrophes happen or stories about major things happening between life and death, life and death situations? And immediately there's a call to the higher power. I know, like there was an, another news story, it was a while ago, but it was about a plane and things had went wrong and the pilot had done everything that he had, was skilled and trained to do, understood to do, and things still were not going good. To a point where he announced to the people on the plane if he, he requesting a prayer to people who he didn't necessarily know, he didn't even know if they had faith or followed the Lord, but he requested that. He's, he was seeing a life and death situation happen before his eyes that he was a part of. And the Lord serves miracles up on a silver platter. That whole plane survived. Exactly. So think about that. One thing that is um, interesting is if you don't know somebody, um, somebody that believes, have you ever asked them to pray? Have you ever asked them to pray for you? Pray to the Lord. Say, you know, you may not understand, you may not believe the Lord, or you may not believe in the Lord, but try, if you don't mind, pray to the Lord for me. Pray to, because we do have a living God. And in times of trouble, and, and typically it has to do with a mortality situation, though, people reach out. Why? Why is that? If we're all about it, right? We're all about it. We can do anything we, that our mind comes to, right? And yet, when it comes to our own mortality, when we finally see it, we seek something to help us that's beyond anything that we could ever imagine or think of. And that is correct. The reason for that is because we are created in the Lord's image, each and every one of us. And we are seeking the Lord, every single person. There's a lot here. Before we go on, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel? What does it make you think? Let's continue to read Hosea chapter 4, the charge against Israel. Hear the word of the Lord, you Israelites, because the Lord has a charge to bring against you who live in the land. There is no faithfulness, no love, no acknowledgement of God in the land. There is only cursing, lying, and murder, stealing, and adultery. They break all bonds, and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Because of this, the land mourns. And all who live in it waste away. The beasts of the field and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea are dying. But let no man bring a charge. Let no man accuse another. For your people are like those who bring charges against a priest. You stumble day and night, and the prophets stumble with you. 
So I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priests. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I also will ignore your children. The more the priests increased, the more they sinned against me. They exchanged their glory for something disgraceful. They feed on the sins of my people and relish their wickedness. And it will be like people, like priests. I will punish both of them for their ways and repay them for their deeds. They will eat but not have enough. They will engage in prostitution but not increase because they have deserted the Lord to give themselves to prostitution, to old wine and new, which take away the understanding of my people. They consult a wooden idol and are answered by a stick of wood. A spirit of prostitution leads them astray. They are unfaithful to their God. They sacrifice on the mountaintops and burn offerings on the hills under oak, poplar, and tabernacle, where the shade is pleasant. Therefore, your daughters turn to prostitution and your daughters-in-law to adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they turn to prostitution, nor your daughters-in-law when they commit adultery, because the men themselves consort with harlots and sacrifice with shine prostitutes. A people without understanding will come to ruin. Though you commit adultery, O Israel, let not Judah become guilty. Do not go to Gilgal. Do not go up to Beth Evan, and do not swear as surely as the Lord lives. The Israelites are stubborn, like a stubborn heifer. How then can the Lord pasture them like lambs in a meadow? Ephraim is joined to idols. Leave him alone. Even when their drinks are gone, they continue their prostitution. Their rulers dearly love shameful ways. A whirlwind will sweep them away, and their sacrifices will bring them shame. Oh, boy. <laughs> I have prophecy and prophecy here, too. Okay. <sighs> okay. Um, there's a lot here. Um, here the, okay, so... The, he's, okay, so listen to what the Lord's telling about Israel from, through Hosea. Hear the word of the Lord, you Israelites, because the Lord has a charge to bring against you who live in the land. There is no faithfulness, no love, no acknowledgement of God in the land. There is only cursing, lying, and murder, stealing, and adultery. They break all bonds, and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Because of this, the land mourns, and all who live in it waste away. The beasts of the field and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea are dying. So the Lord's trying to point out a connection. So when, <laughs> when people were worshiping him, there was many blessings. There was plenty of food. There was protection on all sides. Um, not much hostility going on, including of the animals. Hmm, interesting, right? But when they turn to follow the, their, their own heart's desire, which was the wickedness, uh, they ended up making things worse, for them, making them things bad for themselves. And then when things were bad, they were like, let's, because bad had become good, they were like, let's do more bad because that helps us. And it became that. It became like something that um, when the going gets tough, they were like, okay, well, I don't care about anybody else except for me and my family. So I'm going to make sure if I have to steal, if, if I have to overcharge, if I have to do whatever it takes. And that's literally the, what they were doing to make my life better, to make our lives better. And then when it came down to it, it was even each individual of themselves. It wasn't even, it was like, okay, I don't, okay, so now that the family has it, I don't want the family really. I need it for me. I just need it for me and my life to be better because there's not enough to go around because we're doing these things and I see that they're, they're, they're making things decrease. Like overall, the greediness is making things decrease for the rest of the people. 
including my immediate family. But that's okay because as long as I'm protected, as long as I have the food, as long as I have the economy, I'm all, I'm good. Everybody else can just, you know, they should have done what I did, right? <clears throat> but then if they did, you know, it wouldn't be a survival of the fittest, right? Hmm, sound familiar. <laughs> Bringing past to present. <clears throat> the Lord's giving an example to Israel, shit telling them, look, this is what you're doing. You, your unfaithfulness, because of it, is grow, it's growing and it's making things more and more, it's worse. It's becoming disastrous. Turn from your evil ways so it stops being worse and worse and worse. But they're not doing it. And we can see that. We can see that they stopped worshiping the Lord. They started worshiping these other idols. They started seeking contracts and treaties with these other nations that did not like them to begin with and didn't, did not care for their downfall, wanted their downfall. We're like, yeah, let's do this treaty because that'll bring your downfall even sooner. We're not going to honor it. That's what was happening. So the people of Israel were not being faithful. They were not relying on the Lord. They were just doing things for themselves. Again, are we doing things for ourselves? Because when it comes down to it, it won't be, oh, well, you know, I'm just doing this to protect my family. Or I'm just tech doing this to protect my community. Because it's going to start narrowing down. When things, the more times things get tougher and harder, it's going to, okay, well, not the community. I'm doing things for my family. Okay, not for my full family, but just the people who live in my house. Okay, just for maybe my significant, no, just for myself. Exactly. And you wonder why things are getting worse and worse and worse. That's not love. And they're not getting better for you or the people who are doing that. Being selfish and cruel and conceited and all that. It's getting worse. And it affects all around. So what to do? Lean into the Lord. If we were playing any type of role, ask for forgiveness, of course. Give the Lord praise because he is merciful. Give him praise. You can even start off by giving him praise. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me to this place of humbleness because I'm here to ask you. I'm here to ask of you. <clears throat> but I want to thank you for bringing me to you, for me to finally get that understanding that I need to come to you. And I give you all praise and glory because you are everything. You are love. You are merciful and you are God. Before we go on to thoughts or before we go on to um, before we go on, continue reading. Um, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> there's a lot here. And uh, we're gonna we'll have to come back because there's a lot here and we're gonna um, go over well over. Okay, so let's continue to read I, Hosea chapter five, uh, judgment against Israel. Uh, hear this, you priests. Pay attention, you Israelites. Listen, O royal house. This judgment is against you. You have been a snare at Mizpah, a net spread out on Tebor. The rebels are deep in slaughter. I will discipline all of them. I know all about Ephraim. Israel is not hidden from me. Ephraim, you have now turned to prostitution. Israel is corrupt. Their deeds do not permit them to return to their God. A spirit of prostitution is in their heart. They do not acknowledge the Lord. Israel's arrogance testifies against them. The Israelites, even Ephraim, stumble in their sin. Judah also stumbles with them. When they go with their flocks and herds to seek the Lord, they will not find him. He has withdrawn himself from them. They are unfaithful to the Lord. They give birth to illegitimate children. Now their new moon festivals will devour them in their fields. 
Sound the trumpet in Gibeah, the horn in Ramah. Raise the battle cry in Beth Evan. Lead on, O Benjamin. Ephraim will be laid waste on the day of reckoning. Among the tribes of Israel, I proclaim what is certain. Judah's leaders are like those who move boundary stones. Oof. I will pour out my wrath on them like a flood of water. Ephraim is oppressed, uh, trampled in judgment, intent on pursuing idols. I am like a moth to Ephraim, like rot to the people of Judah. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah his sores, then Ephraim turned to Assyria and sent to the great king for help. But he is not able to cure you, not able to heal your sores. For I will be like a lion to Ephraim, like a great lion to Judah. I will tear them to pieces and go away. I will carry them off with no one to rescue them. Then I will go back to my place until they admit their guilt and they will seek my face in their misery. They will earnestly seek me. A lot here too. Um, well, we're going to have to come back because there's so much here. Sermon upon sermon. Okay. Uh, listen to this. Their deeds do not permit them to return to their God. A spirit of prostitution is in their heart and they do not acknowledge the Lord. Israel's arrogance testifies against them. The Israelites, even Ephraim, stumble in their sin. Judah also stumbles with them. Oof. Okay. So a couple things. Um, so he was talking about in the previous chapters that he was telling that Judah was going to be uh, spared, right? But he's also acknowledging now that Judah will eventually not be spared. So the two kingdoms are split. And Judah is looking on Israel at, and seeing that they're worshiping other idols. And slowly but surely, Judah also does too. Um, they also, instead of seeking the Lord, even when Israel, the two kingdoms, right? So Israel sometimes will even battle Judah, but sometimes Israel will request help from Judah. And instead of seeking the Lord, they're just like, well, these are our, this is our brother. They, we're this, a part of the 12 tribes. This is our brother. Let's just go ahead and do whatever they're requesting. We're, hey, and even when the king said, hey, uh, we're, we're family, this, you know, let's, you, you, what you ask, yeah, sure, let's go and do it. But remember what happened. The prophet had to come, and the prophet didn't even want to speak to the king of Israel. He wanted to only speak to the king. It had not the king of Judah been there, he wouldn't even speak to him. But he told him, what do you do? What do you? He, he was telling him, and, and go back to the book of Kings. You know, you can read about this, and, and, and um, I believe it's Kings and, Solomon, or, and Samuel. Correct me in the comments. Um, but he told him, he's like, look. Had you even not been here, the king of uh, Judah, because, you know, the king was a follower, follower of the Lord, you know, believed in the Lord and, and um, mostly. <laughs> but he's like, had you had you I wouldn't even came to this swar whatever you guys are trying to do, you know. And so he's like, what do you what? Are, I'm just, you know, summarizing. He's like, you know, basically, what are you doing? Why? Why didn't you seek the Lord first? for one, because this is not going to go well. You no, know, he's going to lose. You're going to lose with them. <laughs> and that's what happens. They go out. In fact, the king of Judah dresses up like the king of Israel and ends up getting hurt himself. And the king of Israel ends up dying. And that's just, yeah, there's a lot there. So first of all, again, seek the Lord and his guidance. Seek the Lord and his guidance. He is telling Israel that their arrogance that, that that also what's within within them the spirit of prostitution <sighs> boy that's a lot okay so they're seeking other things they're not seeking the lord they're seeking their own welfare their own the grind they're seeking their own you know they're they're working for what they want that's going to benefit them and them only they are seeking but it has no, it has nothing to do with the lord it has everything to do with their own personal well-being and not understanding that the connection that we all have if we all are made in the lord's image we're all part of uh we're, we're a community we're to love each other and help each other and that is so when things get tough we can all help each other when something uh, cataclysmic happens what do you see you see people going out trying to help each other trying to uh deliver goods to trying to help rebuild you trying to help restore 
um, when tra travesties happen. And that is ex an expression. It's showing that there is love there. <clears throat> now, does sometimes there's things within that, of course, human, you know, fall short. We'll get to that in the New Testament. However, it is showing that it's not just about one person. It's about the love for all, the love for us, the, loving our Lord, loving ourselves, and loving others as ourselves. So there's a lot here. Otherwise, um, you know, it's going to be catastrophic. And look at Judah. Judah was following. And what did he say about Judah? He said, Judah <clears throat> also stumbles with them. Right. Right. So when other people are doing wrong, when other people are sinning, not following the way of love, right? We can get dragged into it. Don't get dragged in. Try and give, seek the Lord and his guidance. Seek the Lord and his, or you can end up dragging others into it. You may have done wrong and it cascaded like a waterfall and another person did wrong to cover their tracks. Seek the Lord and his guidance because that all comes out. That all comes out and then you have to deal with the consequences. And the Lord, he does not want us to deal with stuff that we have done because of wickedness, because of sin, because that just leads to those bad things. Anything bad that you can think of. The Lord only wants what's best for us, which is righteousness and holy and just and all things good. Before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Okay, mm, let's continue to read uh, Hosea chapter 6. Uh, Israel's Israel unrepentant. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us, that we may live in his presence. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. Uh, take note of this. I'm going to reread it right here uh, for the New Testament. But he will, okay, after two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us that we may live in his presence. Take note of that. Okay, let's continue, because that's a prophecy, on prophecy that's going to come to the New Testament. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. What can I, what can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your love is like the morning mist. <laughs> like the early dew that disappears. Therefore, I cut you in pieces with my prophets. I killed you with the words of my mouth. My judgments flashed like lightning upon you, for I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. Okay, so many, um, okay, not done yet. Let's continue. Okay, like Adam, they have broken the covenant. They were unfaithful to me there. Gilead is a city of wicked men, stained with footprints of blood. As marauders, marauder, marauders, I cannot, <laughs> as marauders lie in ambush for a man, so do bands of priests. They murder on the road to Shechem, committing shameful, uh, shameful crimes. I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel. There Ephraim is given to prostitution in Israel to, and Israel is defiled. Also for you, Judah, a harvest is appointed. Whenever I restore the fortunes of my people, um, and then it goes, in, I'm just going to continue into it. Um, seven chapter seven, whenever I would heal Israel, the sins of Ephraim are exposed and the crimes of Samaria revealed. Okay. So, which I'll reread portions of that again. So there was a lot here too, um, particularly this portion here, um, because some believe it's in reference to Jesus. Um, uh, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us. So that's um, the Lord. He, um, Jesus dies on the cross. He comes, comes back on the third day because that is, he dies for our sins, purifying us. And on the third day, he 
is resurrected. He restores. He restores everything. Because sin equals death. We'll learn all about that in the New Testament. Um, then um, another point here. Um, he's saying that, therefore, um, your love is like the morning mist, like the early dew that disappears. So whenever things are going good, we're happy. We celebrate. And then we start forgetting where those that goodness comes from and we stop praising we stop giving the lord praise and that you know bringing past to present and that's why it's good to as much as you can have the lord in our lives walk have our walk with the lord every day every day it's so important it's so important to have to acknowledge him to find strength in him, to find wisdom, seek his wisdom, um, so that all, will, that all will go good with us, all will go good for us. When things do, when bad things do happen, we have hope, we have someone to rely on. Um, and then he goes on to say, for I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. This is so, like, how many, how many times, like, even before they started doing the offerings, like, all the way back, Cain and Abel, <laughs> like, and on to Noah, faith, it was faith in the Lord, believing his word and having faith in the Lord. And once again, the Lord is pointing that out. The practice of the sacrifices was an acknowledgement. Acknowledgement of how sinful we are, how we needed a Savior. Everything pointed to our Lord and Savior Jesus. Why we needed the Lord to complete the covenant. He made the covenants and man continued to break them. So the Lord said, you know what? I'm going to put wrap all these together into one as my original plan and do it in my timing and show it in my timing. And that's what he did successfully. Battle won. <laughs> the Lord's done it. Amen and hallelujah. We can thank him and praise him. And we can praise him for all eternity. Amen and hallelujah. I mean, that's there's so much here. But before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? <clears throat> Let's continue to read to one more chapter. Uh, Hosea chapter 7. Uh, whenever I would, I'm going to reread some of this. I, whenever I will restore the fortunes of my people, whenever I would heal Israel, the sins of Ephraim are exposed and the crimes of Samaria revealed. They practice deceit. Thieves break into houses. Bandits rob in the streets. But they do not realize that I remember all their evil deeds. Their sins engulf them. They are always before me. They delight the king with their wickedness, the princes with their lies. They are all adulterers, burning like an oven, whose fire the baker need not stir, from the kneading of the dough till it rises. On the day of the festival <clears throat> of our king, the princes become inflamed with wine, and he joins hands with the mockers. Their hearts are like an oven. They approach him with intrigue. Their passion smolders all night. In the morning, it blazes like a flaming fire. All of them are hot as an oven. They devour their rulers. All their kings fall, and none of them calls on me. Ephraim mixes with the nations. Ephraim is a flat cake not turned over. Foreigners sap his strength, but he does not realize it. His hair is sprinkled with gray, but he does not notice. Israel's arrogance testifies against him. But despite all this, he does not return to the Lord his God or search for him. Ephraim is like a dove, easily deceived and senseless, now calling to Egypt, now turning to Assyria. When they go, I will throw my net over them. I will pull them down like birds of the air. When I hear them flocking together, I will catch them. Woe to them, because they have strayed from me. Destruction to them, because they have rebelled against me. I long to redeem them, but they speak lie, uh, they, but they speak lies against me. They do not cry out to me from their hearts, but wall upon, but a uh, wail upon their beds. They gather together for grain and new wine, but turn away from me. I train them and strengthen them, but they plot evil against me. They do not turn to the Most High. They are like a faulty bow. Their leaders will fall by the sword because of their insolent words for this they will be ridiculed in the land of egypt so there was a lot here too oh my goodness there was a lot um okay so 
Um, their hearts are like an oven. They approach him with intrigue. Their passion smolders all night. In the morning, it blazes like a flaming fire. All of them are hot as an oven. They devour their rulers. All their kings fall, and none of them calls on me. So when... It's, that's uh, wickedness. That's sin. He's describing how the people... Um, because things weren't going their way, they continued to do worse and worse, trying to make it better for themselves. It became, like I mentioned, like over and over again, it became less about all and more about the community and then the fan and then the tribe and then the family and then that and then themselves individually. Um, they seek the power. They seek the the just the ability to have power and wield wield whatever power they believed that they had. Um, they also, again, uh, sought out other nations. Um, <clears throat> Ephraim is like a dove, easily deceived and senseless now, calling to Egypt, now turning to Syria. Remember, these nations, they left Egypt. Once again, why are they asking to go back to Egypt? Why are they doing a contract with Egypt? Egypt enslaved them. <laughs> and here's Assyria, wanting to do the same. So... But instead, they were like, well, we'll do contracts with them so they won't bother us. Okay. History. Um, have we learned in history that whenever tribes or people would do contracts with others, for some odd reason, that contract just gets broken. It's happened many of times. Take a look all around. Take a look all around. And I mean all around. <laughs> Does it even happen to this day? Absolutely. So when we're not seeking the Lord, when we're seeking to satisfy our own needs, when we're seeking to prevent something on our own, these things can come up where we do little temporary band-aids that aren't really there. We think that they're there, mm -mm, but they're not. So then when true disaster strikes, then we're mad and we're upset. The person that we need to be upset and mad at, we can be mad and upset with ourselves. It's not good to be. So what we need to do is we need to seek the Lord's forgiveness. And that's why we should have sought the Lord's guidance in the first place. In all things, seek the Lord and his guidance. He wants what's best for us in his timing. And when it's the Lord's will, amen and hallelujah, let those blessings rain down. And that is something that Israel was missing out on. They were seeking to self-gratify, to self uh sensationalize and guess what just wasn't working out and the lord saw it the lord saw it and it was being uh even wickedness to the israel was being wicked even to their brother even to judah because it got to that point where they were just caring about themselves before we go on, though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? <clears throat> okay, let's, um, let's do a quick review because we're going to do a Hosea in two parts. The reason why is because um, I feel like it would have been really, really short. Um, and several of these um, books may be two or three parts coming out because they're not going to be, um, some of them are not really long. Okay. Because that once you read past after Daniel, they start becoming a little bit shorter. Um, let's do a quick review. Uh, Hosea chapter one. Uh, when the Lord uh, began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, "Go, take your, to yourself an adulterous wife and ch children of unfaithfulness, because the land is guilty of the vilest adultery in departing from the Lord." <clears throat> so he's using Hosea and um, showing that. What the Lord's relate, how the Lord felt about his relationship with Israel. He did all these things for Israel. He, he brought them 
He's he, remember what he said in Jeremiah, what he said in just what we read in Daniel, what he what he says says in the book of Samuel, what he says um, about how Israel is to him. He he rescued them. He saved them. He saved them with a strong arm. He um, brought them to the promised land. He provided new wine, milk, and honey. And yet, here we are. A couple of generations later, they don't care to worship the Lord. They are seeking other gods. They're doing their self. It's all, they're all into themselves. And yet, here we are. Bringing past to present. Sound familiar? And yet, here we are. Let's continue. I, uh, Hosea chapter 2. Um, Israel punished and restored. Like, uh, listen to this. In that day, I will, okay, so, um, in that day I will respond, declares the Lord, Lord, I will respond to the skies and they will respond to the earth and the earth will respond to the grain, the new wine and oil, and they will respond to Jezreel. I will plant her for myself in the land. I will show my love to the one I called, not my loved one. I will say to those called not my people, you are my people, and they will say, you are my God, because that is who the Lord is. He will do it for us. He will accomplish. He will defeat sin and wickedness and death. He will do it for us. And all we need is faith. Faith in him and trust that we know that these things have been done. Amen and hallelujah. There's so much here. <clears throat> um, on to Hosea 3. Uh, repeat it. Repeat it. Repeat it. Forgiveness. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and about a homer and a uh, lethek of barley. Then I told her, you are to live with me many days. You must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man, and I will live with you. Um, because to forgive, to forgive and how the Lord felt. He was like, they're going to sin over and over again, but I'm, I, I'm forgiving. And this is another representation. Here goes uh, Gomer, his wife. She immediately goes out and starts doing what she was doing before, prostituting. While she was married, the Lord said, forgive her, do what needs to be done, bring her back in. That's how the Lord is with us. Each and every time, he forgives us. Um, on to uh, Hosea uh, 4, um, where he says, Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priests. Because, oh, I'm sorry, let me go up to the first part of it. Um, it's Hosea uh, 4, 6. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priest. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I will also ignore your children. So he's telling them the knowledge is the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord that they have um, through all the prophets that they've had um, all the way back, you know. So, and all the, the wisdom that has been brought forth to them and how they're refusing. They're refusing to acknowledge it. They're refusing to uh, even do any of the festivals that were for them, you know, to celebrate, hey, our relationship with the Lord. And then we're going to have the festival of, uh, of feasts. We're going to have these um, Sabbaths and new moons and all that all great things and have uh, just this wonderful time together and worshiping the Lord. Instead, they weren't doing so. Or they were mixing in other practices um, as far as <laughs> sacrificing each other or doing other detestable things. Okay, and also the priests at the time, the priests were not uh, fully worshiping the Lord. or They were doing things themselves. They were enriching themselves. They were uh, allowing for things, detestable acts to be done, including in the temple. Uh, the temple was becoming... Um, Something similar to where adults go to play. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Not worshiping, but playing. <laughs> the adult kind of play. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, so the Lord's like, I see all this. I see, I see it all. And you're, re you're rejecting what I'm telling you. You're rejecting the, the, the love that I'm trying to provide to you. You're rejecting it. So, and you're wondering why things are going bad. You're wondering why things are going downhill. It's because 
you don't see he they're not seeking him they're reject they're rejecting him so this is what's happening the lord's telling him okay this is this is you these are the consequences you're this is of your own making this is what you're doing and so uh going on to uh, hosea chapter five where he tells um through hosea um where he's talking about um then I will go back to my place and they will admit their guilt and they will seek my face in their misery. They will earnestly seek me. So he's talking about what will happen, the exile. He's talking about how they'll be exiled, both Israel and Judah, and how they will want to continue to worship the Lord. They will want to go back to the promised land. And they eventually do after the certain Specified time frame, they do, and they go back to rebuild the temple. On, on to Hosea chapter 6, where, um, oh, just, there was a lot here too. Um, For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, an acknowledgement of God, rather than burnt offerings. That says so much. He just wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to acknowledge him. He wants us to acknowledge his son. He wants us to acknowledge him and love. And look, he loves us. Amen and hallelujah. We need it. <laughs> we need it. Um, on to Hosea chapter 7 and uh, telling the people, um, I train them and strengthen them, but they plot evil against me. They do not turn to the most high. They are like a faulty bow. Their leaders will fall by the sword because of their insolent words. For this, they will be ridiculed in the land of Egypt. Exactly. Because even then, like, he's telling them the prophecy. And what happens, too, when the um, king of Babylon comes and he gets and he overtakes, overthrows Judah and takes their king and then he and places the cousin as a king. If, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. And then he tells them, oh, and then they... Um, take a moment um, to flee to Egypt with Jeremiah, remember? And, and Jeremiah told him, the Lord said to stay here, but the remnant instead went on to Egypt. So what happened? They were, exactly, King Babylon came, they were still taken. And, and Egypt was destroyed. <laughs> Pretty much. So... We, un we understand that they don't listen, but the Lord knows that they're not going to listen. So he's going to make the way. He's going to do it himself. And we'll learn more about that in the New Testament. Before, uh, though, with today's Lamp Bible study, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Thank you so much for joining me in another, again in another Lamp Bible study. I hope and pray that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom together through his holy word. Please continue to pray for me. I will always continue to pray for you. Lamp Bible Study comes out every Tuesdays and Thursdays with highlights throughout the week and flashlights on Fridays. Um, if you have any praises, prayer requests, questions, concerns, please leave them in the comment section or check out the Instagram page that gets updated every now and then. <laughs> if you have any additional questions, concerns, comments, praises, prayer requests, um, feel free to leave something. In, there is an email in the contact section uh, on the YouTube channel. Can't wait till our next Lamp Bible study. We'll be completing the book of Hosea and then moving on to, I believe, Joel. Hosea, uh, aim, uh, Joel, yes. <laughs> and there's a lot more to come. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so until then, super excited. Can't wait for the next land Bible study. See there, there's more to come, more to come. So stay tuned. Uh, until then have a blessed morning, a blessed day, a blessed afternoon, a blessed evening and a blessed night. God bless. <laughs>